Hi, and welcome to Book Chat with Julie. I'm Julie from the Argenta Branch Library, part of the Layman Library System in North Little Rock, Arkansas. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about thrillers and mysteries and suspense. Here's a little bit of trivia for you about thrillers and suspense. In 1990, Law & Order premiered on TV. Since then, the Law & Order franchise has added 10 more spin-offs worldwide. In 30 years, there have been over 1,250 episodes within the franchise and still going. And I have tried to make it an effort to watch as many of those as I could while we're on lockdown. I won't tell you how many I've really watched. Most of us, if you like Law & Order, you know that you've already watched a lot of them. You've already watched a lot of them over and over and you've seen the same episode. You know the same outcome, but we still are drawn to our mystery and our suspense. And what's the difference between thriller, mystery, suspense? <clears throat> a thriller, the protagonist is in danger from the very beginning. A suspense, the main character may become aware of danger, but only gradually. And in a mystery, the reader is exposed to the same information as the detective. But in a suspense story, the reader is aware of the things unknown to the protagonist. All of the suggestions that I'm going to uh, show you today are available on Hoopla and Libby. They're also available in the library. Um, it will be very soon that you can go to laymanlibrary.org and with your library card you can put um, items on hold and then as soon as the holds are lifted and we are ready for curbside service then we will get your hold they'll call you and you'll come to the library and pick it up so if you don't already follow us on the Argenta Branch Library page or the William F. Lehman Library page on Facebook, Instagram. Um, be sure to follow us because that's going to give you all the information as we enter our uh, new phases um, of our new normal for the library. So thank you again for joining me today. So Stuart Woods is a popular author. Um, he does a lot of suspense. He's the one who created the Stone Barrington um, character. A lot of you are probably already familiar with him and so that if you are then you already know that there are 55 plus books featuring just the Stone Barrington character. A lot of Stuart Wood's characters they filter in and out of um, his uh, series, out of his standalones and um, <clears throat> he's a good one to follow. You don't necessarily have to read them in order um, because he does have over 75 books. F again, 55 of them are just the Stone Barrington um, character. And like I said, um, a lot of his characters do filter in and out um, within his books. So I think it would be very hard um, to read them all um, unless you're a fast reader. Um, his first book in his series um, is available. <clears throat> And, and it is called New York Dead, It's the First. New York Dead by Stuart Woods. So if you like uh, Stuart Woods or you want to be introduced to Stuart Woods, um, just uh, start with any of them. And again, they're available on Hoopla and Libby. Lisa Jewell is another author um, that Libby and um, Hoopla have quite a few of her selections as well as we do in the library. This is her, um, her newest, The Family Upstairs, and it is uh, Be Careful Who You Let In. Soon after her 25th birthday, Libby Jones receiving a letter with the identity of her birth parents. She is the sole inheritor of the estate. She is soon on a collision course with danger, bone-chilling suspense in a large house in London's fashionable Chelsea. A baby is awake in her cot. Well fed and cared for, she is happily waiting for someone to come pick her up. And in the kitchen lie three decomposing corpses. Close to them is a hastily scrawled note. They've been dead for several days. Who's been looking after the baby and where did they go? Another good uh, stay awake uh, all night while you finish that book. And When She Was Good is a powerfully gripping, intensely emotional story of the suburban madam, a convicted murderer whose sentence is about to be overturned, and the child that they will both do anything to keep. Littman has already won virtually every prize the mystery genre has to offer. 
So Laura Lippman is another good one. One of my, um, probably my, one of my favorite authors, and sometimes um, they're my favorite authors because I kind of fangirl authors. I like to um, follow them on social media. I like to, if, if they're having a book signing, I like to go to the book signing. I will travel to go to book signings. Um, JT Ellison um, is one of my favorites. She, she interviews um, a lot of different authors um, on her Facebook page, and she has um, things that she puts out every week. So um, I definitely just enjoy um, listening to her talk and um, listening to her interactions with other authors. But Good Girls Lie. Um, this is one that I got um, in the at the beginning of the winter. I um, actually got it with a, a little Christmas uh, gift card. So, and then I waited for it to come out so that I could um, actually get a signed copy. So, perched atop the hill in a tiny town of Marchburg, Virginia, the Good School is a prestigious prep school known as Silent Ivy. The boarding school is a choice for daughters of the rich and famous. It accepts only the best and the brightest. Its elite status, long-held tradition, and honor code are ideal for preparing young, exceptional women for bright, brilliant futures at the Ivy League level. But a stranger has come to good, and this Ivy has turned poisonous. In a world where appearances are everything, as long as students pretend to follow the rules, no one questions the cruelties of the secret societies or the dubious behavior of the privileged young women who expect to get away with murder. But when a popular student is found dead, the truth cannot be ignored. Rumors suggest that she is struggling with a secret that drove her to suicide. But look closely, because there are truths and there are lies, and then there is everything that really happened. J.T. Ellison. A new author to me um, that I just um, have read and finished the book just this week um, is M.T. Edwardson. And it was a really good book. It's called A Nearly Normal Family, a gripping th thriller that forces you, the reader, to consider how far would you go to protect the ones you love? This is a twisted narrative of love and murder. A horrific crime makes seemingly normal family question everything they thought they knew about their life and one another. 18-year-old Stella stands accused of the brutal murder of a man almost 15 years her senior. She is an ordinary teenager from an upstanding local family. What reason could she have to know a shady businessman, let alone have killed him? Stella's father, a pastor, a mo and a mother, a criminal defense attorney. They find their moral compasses tested as they defend their daughter. While struggling to understand why she is a suspect, told in an unusual three-part structure, a nearly normal family asks the questions, how well do you know your own children, and how far would you go to protect them? So another great uh, new author is A Nearly uh, Normal Family. So last time in our book chat I said that if you have a book that you would like for me to recommend, if you want to chat about a book, um, my email julie.delashaw at laymanlibrary.org is down below. Also um, just again like, share, and comment on um, the Argenta page, on the Layman Library page. And let us know you're out there. Uh, let's book chat. And thanks again for joining me for another episode of This is Book Chat with Julie. Thank you so much. <laughs>